Please remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to be notified of new videos and live streams. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المخلصين الصادقين الرادين بما رضوا به ربهم ومن تبعهم بإسان لا يوم الدين وبعد إباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وطاعته فقد فاز المتقون إباد الله We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make us among those that when they hear the good word that they listen and that they take heed inshallah As we all know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for his servants that they must give from that which Allah has given them. And that this legislation is by way of obligation, is by way of fard. In terms of zakat, we have to do it. And by way of preference, istihbab. And that is everything done is zakat. So sadaqah of all its forms. And there are reasons as to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this. It's not because he needs it. Hasha. People sometimes they confuse as if Allah needs help. <laughs> but there are numerous, numerous things people don't realize that accrue that, that are a result of this legislation, of the sharia. And we must know and believe and inshallah, for those who practice it, will know for real, will know through experience as well. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not write anything for us except that fihi khair. In it is goodness, in it is benefit, in it is success, in it is happiness, in it is contentment, in it is in it, in it. There is no loss in any form in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us, has prescribed upon us. And why should that not be? Why should not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demand this of us and ask? He demands and he asks, right? encourages. Why? Why wouldn't he? Is it not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who allowed us to achieve that which we have achieved and that which we will achieve insha'Allah? Was it not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gave us the health to enable us to do, to work. They gave us the mental stability for us to think. So when we say that this is the wealth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it may sound simplistic. It may sound, hey, hold on. You are forgetting the hard work that I do. The late nights, the, the stress that I have over my investments, the travel I have to make, the less time I have with my family. What about my work? Yeah? This is not the case. It is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sharia is denying that role. But think of it from a different perspective. Is it possible in any sense that we would be able to do anything that we did without Allah's support? Is anyone so silly, so ignorant to say that Allah had no role in it, that this is mine, that I did it. I don't think any sane Muslim would ever say this. Any reasonable thinking person. You imagine, many in this world, if not the majority, are in sickness, are in poverty, are in uh, war, are in instability, are in drought, are in famine, are in disease, are in all sorts. 
How many people are born into this? And if Allah wished overnight, oh, in an instant, He can withhold the rain. If Allah wished in an instant, He can spread disease. <laughs> Instantly, He could. What is preventing Allah from doing that? And if Allah did that, what hope do you have? So it is reasonable, it is logical to recognize that whatever we have achieved, whatever good that we, inshallah, we do for ourselves, for our family, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is central to that. Central, he's at the center of it. And it could be the case that Allah can make ours difficult. How many people work hard, hours and hours and hours a day, a week, but they get nowhere financially? It's not because of a lack of work. It's because Allah made their risk hard that way. How many people are rich today and they are asking tomorrow? How many people do we know from ourselves, from experience of, of the stories that we hear where this has been the case? How many people are strong carrying their entire family? Carrying their brothers, their sisters, their nieces, their uncles, their father, their mother, all of it. Carrying them. And the next day they are sick. They are, need to be cared for. How many? This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتُوهُمْ مِمَّا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَتَاكُ Allah says it. And give them from the wealth of Allah. Allah says in Quran, from مِمَّا لِلَّهِ the wealth of Allah. He didn't say your wealth. He says, you give them what you have, what you have, what we have, give them, Allah says, from my wealth that I gave you. Allah says, it's my wealth. It's not yours. It's not mine. Allah allowed it. Allah permitted it, entrusted it, is perhaps the more accurate word. Entrusted. So, when a person gives, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislate? Zakat and sadaqah. Why? So that we can be grateful. So that we can recognize and acknowledge that this is Allah's wealth and Allah's rights in that wealth. Just, and, and people should be proud, to be honest. People should be so incredibly honored that they are in a position to give and not receive. They should be so incredibly honored that Allah has made people's needs through them, not our needs from them. They should be honored. I don't know if you have ever been in a situation where you need somebody, where you are desperate, if not for yourself, maybe for your child. Child is dying. How desperate do we need money to pay for the bills? for the medical bills. Parents are aging and we cannot afford to care for them. So if not for us, then maybe for someone else. So when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala empowers us, empowers with the trust that He has given and He has placed us in a position to be those through Him His amana can be executed. So thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the trial, in the trial of desperation is a major trial indeed. In the trial of desperation, how many people leave their religion? How many people leave the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in desperation? How many? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we, we express the gratitude that he has not made us among them. But, and we ask that Allah will honor us to be among those who give. So one of the blessings, one of the reasons, one of the benefits of giving is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to be grateful. Okay. The second, well, there are many, the second one, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeks to purify ourselves, to remove from our heart a disease that... Corrupts. فيما أخرجه البخاري في أدب المفرد أن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا من سيدكم يا بني سلمة 
He says, who is your chief? Who is your, the, the, your, your chief? You know, the Sayyid, the, 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 the highest among you. Oh, Bani Salama from the Hosun Akhraj, from the Ansar. And they say, it was Jud ibn Qais. Illa anna nubakhiluhu. That he is Jud ibn Qais, that he is a Sayyid. Except that we regard him as a miser. As a miser. Why? Because he was rich and he did not spend on his family, on his wife, didn't give the nafaqa, didn't spend on his children, they were in need, didn't spend on his relatives, didn't spend on this, didn't spend of that. Adrak al-Islam, he was there in the time of Islam, but he was a munafiq. And nifaquhu was similar, was at the level of the nifaq of the chief of the munafiqeen, uh, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Alayhi ma yastahik, min Allahi ma yastahik. He was at his level. The worst of the munafiqeen, he was at that level. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, uh, uh, وَأَيِّ دَائِنْ أَدْوَاءُ مِنَ الْبُخْرِ The Prophet then, when he heard this, that they regard him as miserly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, which disease is more devastating than being bakhil, being stingy, being miserly. Now the Prophet says, Who's, which is the worst disease? Bal Sayyidukum Amr ibn Jamuh. But then he says, the chief of you is Amr ibn Jamuh. And Amr ibn Jamuh radiallahu anhu, he used to be the servant of the Asnam before. Uh, before, before Islam, he used to look after the idols. So he was a servant. He was a carer, a, a caretaker. And in Islam, so he became Muslim, Asan Islamuhu, and he, every time the Prophet ﷺ got married, he would be the one who would take over the walima. So all the expenses of the Prophet ﷺ's and arrangements and organization, everything, Amr ibn Majur, Amr ibn Jamuh radiallahu anhu would take care of it. Here the Prophet ﷺ is saying something. He is correcting which one we hold in esteem. The one we hold in esteem is not the one who is inherited through blood. The one we hold in esteem is the one who serves the community. Hmm. Not the one who is suffering from the disease. The Prophet says it's a disease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يُوقَ شُحَ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِهُونَ the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whosoever cleans themselves from shuh. Shuh is that greed, is that hedonism, that want, that want, 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 me, me, me. Whosoever clears themselves, purifies themselves from that, then they are the successful. Meaning that who does not cleanse themselves from greed is from the, among the losers. It is a poison. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated that we must give from our, our wealth, and then he then encouraged that we give on top of that which we must, on top of that which we have to, we give out of the goodness of our heart. Why? So that we can force this heart, we can whip out this poison from the heart and cast it out, and so that our heart will be pure. So that our heart will be not attached to the uh, shackles of wealth. And that is one of the other reasons that we will be liberated. We will be free from the poison, from the enslavement of wealth. What do you mean by enslavement? I have you an example. Okay. That our concern for money, our concern for our work, our concern for blah, 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 uh, whatever it may be, will prevent us from observing the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rights of this deen. How many people, how many times have we ourselves missed our prayer because of chasing after money? Huh? Our concern for money, our concern for our job, our concern for risk that Allah has already written leads us to perform those things which Allah does not want allow. He does not allow us to, to miss our salat. That is a major transgression, not a minor transgression, by the way. It is a major transgression. How many of us that we want to do the hajj, we have enough? 
Oh, I'm still working, I'm too busy, I'm too into this. Even though as soon as you have the wealth, it is fard, it is obligatory upon a person to do hajj. How many? I'm too busy, I'm too this. Who is the victim here? Who is making decisions? It's not, it's not what we know to be true. It's not what we believe in. That's not what we, what's making decisions here. What's making decisions is our wealth. It's our love for it, to preserve it, to care for it, to grow it. That is our love. Our love for that. Stopping us to do that which we know to be good. Are we free? Are we in control? Are we making the decisions? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated this, remember, have to give. We're ripping out this thing and we are forcing our heart. We are hammering it with iron, with steel, with hardship, all of it. We're hammering it into a heart that then is not attached to the wealth that Allah has already written. That does not compromise our values, compromise what we know to be true, what we know to be right. How many times? I'll tell you, how many times? Reflect for yourself. How many times when somebody is needy, your family, your friends, whatever it may be, and you have the money, and they're asking for support, and then you start the calculations. Oh, I've got this bill, I've got that bill, I have to save for this, I have to say, what happens if this happens? I need a contingency plan, a contingency plan, a contingency plan for something that has not happened. For some future we do not know, as if we know the future. And what we do, we say, oh, I, don't, I can't afford it right now. How many times we think like this? <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for his servants to be free from the deception and slavery of possessions. Wealth is something you possess. It is not the owner. It is a possession. It's supposed to be owned. So in other words, we are owned by that which is owned. And we have given up what we have done. We have made a terrible trade from the king of kings, Ar-Razak, the one who gives, Al-Qabid the one who withholds, the one who extends. In whose hand is everything? We have traded trust in him, the one who has no owner, but he is king and sovereign to that which people possess to be our Lord. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam Rasul Alameen Wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajmin wa ba'd Ibadullah From among the wisdom, the benefits of giving Whether it is zakat or whether it is sadaqah Giving, giving right, Is that it will increase It will increase, whatever it is, it will increase You give your time, inshallah, Allah will Give your wealth, inshallah, Allah will make more wealth for you You give your energy, inshallah, Allah will give you more energy for you you give your health, inshallah, Allah will give more health for you. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أَتَيْتُ مِنْ رِبَا لِيَرْبُوا فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ فَلَا يَرْبُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَتَيْتُ مِنْ زَكَاةٍ تُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُدْعِفُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what you give, so that you can, what you give, you give it, but you want a return from it. You want to profit from people. Right? Allah is saying, when to make a profit from people, right? yeah, that's why you're doing it, it will not increase, it will not have any benefit in the eyes of Allah. But what you give genuinely, selflessly of zakat, of pure wealth, no strings attached, no seeking a return from people, nothing. You give it selflessly for Allah and Allah alone. To read and watch Allah, this is the shart, condition, that you must be sincere for Allah. فَأُولَٰئِكَ These people... They are the ones who will be subject to continuous increase. Increase in dunya and in akhirah. 
Just like stinginess will destroy a person in dunya and akhirah. Giving and will elevate and increase a person in dunya and in akhirah. This following hadith. Hey, bismillah. Fima akhrajuhu imam muslim. And Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu. And Imam Bukhari. And Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called. Ta'isa abdu dinar wa abdu dirham wa abdu khamisa. إذا أؤتي رضي وإذا لم يؤت سخط تعس فانتقص وإذا شيق فلنتقش. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم say says, miserable or destroyed or perish, be the one who is the servant, the slave of the dinar and dirham, the money. And the servant, the slave of Khamisa. Khamisa is wealth and luxuries. Luxury, luxuries in general means luxury uh, garments, but it means luxuries in general. Ta'isa, the Prophet ﷺ is saying they are miserable, they shall perish halak, they are destroyed. Ta'isa fantaqas. Again, he says it again. They may they be destroyed. May they perish and go backwards. So whatever advances they gain they have in religion, may they go backwards. And if a thorn hits them, if they are suffering, do not help them. If they have a thorn, do not take it out. Do not help them take it out. Let them suffer in their misery. I ask you this. Whoever knows the Prophet ﷺ hears of this hadith, then they know this is not a common hadith. Here, the Prophet ﷺ is giving dua against people. Not for them, against them. How many times have you come across where the Prophet ﷺ gave dua against someone? For the disbelievers, disbelievers. This is for believers. These are the people who say they're Muslim, by the way. I have not, in my life, I have not come across any. This hadith should have everybody in tears. The Prophet is giving dua against them. And the Prophet's dua is mustajab. The Prophet's dua is all answered. May they be destroyed. Don't help them. If they suffer, let them suffer in their misery. May they go backwards. May they become worse off. Who? The servant of money the servant of luxuries, the servant of wealth. These people, from among those who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. How many people do this? How many, if not many Muslims, are they exactly this? And they are the recipients of Allah, of the Prophet's dua against them. Against them. Do you think the Prophet is happy? Do you think that the Prophet is, is, is taking it easy? These words, who can, who can succeed? Who can get out of these words when the Prophet gives a dua against one? Why? Because they lost the trust in Allah. Why? Because they worship other than Allah. Why? Because they dedicate their energies other than Allah. And why did the Prophet says, If they have the thorn, then don't take it out. So they will be hampered. They will be withheld, you may say, held back here from pursuing this course of evil. So that maybe, inshallah, they will reflect and make a different decision for how they live. Maybe the suffering one day will get through to them. They've got to change their ways. This is why the person, don't help them. Let them taste the misery of their actions. Because they, as the Prophet ﷺ says, the worst of poisons. A poison, he says, فَوَاللَّهِ لَا أَخْشَى عَلَيْكُمُ الْفَقْرِ وَلَكِنْ أَخْشَى عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ يَبْسَطَ عَلَيْكُمُ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا بَسَطَتْ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ فَتَنَافَسُوا فِيهَا كَمَا تَنَافَسُوا فِيهَا وَتُهْلِكُكُمْ كَمَا أَحْلَكَتْهُمْ The Prophet ﷺ says that I do not fear for you poverty. I do not fear for my ummah poverty. 
Allah, inshallah, will not make us poor. I fear for them that Allah will open the rest of this dunya for them, for the ummah of Muhammad. So they will compete in the dunya like the people from before competed. And they will be destroyed by the dunya like the people before were destroyed by the dunya. Destroyed in dunya and destroyed in akhirah. From the people who compete in dunya. Huh. I think everybody who reflects, if not themselves, then maybe their parents. If not their parents, then maybe their children. If not their children, maybe their brothers and their sisters or whoever. Their cousins, their uncles are exactly this. Do you think the Prophet وسلم, on whom descends the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of whom time is lifted for him if Allah wishes, does not know the hal, the state of his ummah, does not know the greed, the disease of greed, does not know the destruction of greed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts. And he knows the poisons where we do, where that taste sweet. So he makes sure, he forces us by way of obligation to rip it out. To rip it out through zakat, through sadaqah. And then the hadith continues. Wa tuba. Tuba li akhidin bi'inani farsihi fi sabirillah. And paradise, jannah. Before the one who has taken the reins of his horse in the Fisa Billah, fighting in Fisa Billah. His hair is disheveled, is unkept, and his feet are dusty. Uh, uh, what's the word? The word, the word, the word. Uh, one second, please. إِذَا كَانَ فِي الْحَرَاسَ كَانَ فِي الْحَرَاسَ وَإِذَا كَانَ فِي السَّاقَ كَانَ فِي السَّاقَ If he's in the front of the army, so he's the one he, going to meet the enemy first, then he is happy and content. And if he is in the back of the army, the rear guard, he is happy and content. وَإِذَا إِسْتَعْذَنَا لَمْ يُؤْذَنْ لَهُ وَإِذَا شَفَأَ لَمْ يُشَفَأَ He is so unassuming, unambig ambiguous. Not known to people that if he were to ask permission, he would not be given permission. And if he was to intercede to try to help somebody, nobody would listen to him. The Prophet called, gave dua that they would receive Jannah. The person who does so fi sabilillah for Allah and Allah alone. Not for the people who if they, are, if they are given, they are happy. If they are not given, they are, they are angry. And if you ask of them, oh, it's the end of life. Not these people. The people who are silent and give with the right hand that the left does not know. The people who does not matter if people do not praise them and do not recognize them and do not know them. Allah knows them. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa prayed for them. And inshallah, the, Nabi, the dua of the Prophet sallallahu mustajab and they will have jannah. This person, content in serving this deen. For them, the Prophet gave du'a for. Those people who wanted for themselves, entitled, look at me. The Prophet gave du'a against them. So let a person choose to which fi'ah, to which group they wish to belong. Do they wish to belong with the people the Prophet loves and cares for and gave du'a for? Or they wish to be the people the Prophet does not like, does not own, does not want anything to do with? And gave du'a such that he gave du'a against them. Let the wise person choose. Let the wise person who wants to increase their wealth choose Allah. Let the, one, let the wise person who wishes to purify themselves with a pure heart to purify their wealth choose Allah. Let the one who doubt, let them trust in Allah. Let the one who fears, let them depend on Allah. For the one who does not know, let them trust in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let the one who is scared and alone, let them find strength and comfort in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hey heart, hey heart, and I warn you myself and I warn everyone from the sweet deceptions of Iblis. From the cunning of the viper. 
kulu matasmahun wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum. Before we give dua to close it, as you all know, uh, we've been having these messages on the chat regarding collection for the masjid. As you all know, that such a heavy sum does not, uh, is not achieved through the lax, casual approach. As you all know, there has been probably less than 30 messages, maybe 20 whatever messages. And of that, we have got a pledge of 30 p pledges, yeah? of 1,000 a month for 10 months, that's 300,000. So a person who is disturbed, I, I've got the beeping, a second message. You're focusing on yourself, what, how you feel, and not focusing on what is actually happening. If a pledge happens, that is 10,000 less of a debt and closer to ownership of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People, they spend months, years away in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lose limbs, lose this, and they are happy. People get messages, and they break down. Messages, and they break down. And we say, if, I've, if jihad is calm, I will be in the front. Uh, you will be in the tears in the back. <sighs> if 20 or 30 messages, it is not 30. If 30 messages leads to 300,000, let there be a million messages. Let there be a million if it's going to lead to paying off the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reality is that a very few people take it upon themselves to actually work for the house of Allah. It's not, nobody gets paid here. Nobody, uh, no money goes into personal banks. Nobody does, the, no, people in this masjid, everything you see is from donations. Everything you see is from people giving. Everything. Every single thing, this carpet, this speaker, this, this hat, this, this, oh no, that's mine. <laughs> Everything. And I tell you, for those people who are silent, and there are many, and alhamdulillah, there are many. Remember that was, even though many people do not know, I draw comfort that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you. I draw comfort that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed for you. May Allah make us among them. إباد الله إن الله أمر بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته وصبيه بكوسي فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد يا رب الله أست love you and follow your path truly Ya Rab, allow us to be true to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and follow his example. Ya Allah, allow us to be modeled after the perfect model of the community, of righteous community of the Sahaba. Allow us to have the characteristics that they had. Allow us to be able to be selfless like they were selfless. Allow us to work for this deen as they worked for this deen. And even though we will never be able to reach their ranks, allow us to be friends of theirs in the Day of Judgment. Ya Allah, allow us to be among those who the Prophet ﷺ prayed for and not prayed against. Ya Allah, this is your house and you are razzaq. Open the hearts of your believers to your plight, to your cause. Soften the hearts for all things that is good. Allow people's wealth to reach those in need. Those who ask and those who do not ask. Allow wealth to be that which creates that strong bond between us. Allow our wealth to have that mahabba between us, to have that strength between us, such that there is none in this community who is needy and in silence, except that their brother knows about it and helps them. Ya Allah, increase the ones who give in your path. Purify the ones who give in your path. Make us true to your religion, true to our shahada, and inshallah, honored and qualified for your fadus. Forgive us our sins, which are many. Purify our hearts, which are filthy. Uh, purify our tongues, which are nasty. Purify our eyes, which are wicked. Purify us with the love of Quran. Purify us with the recitation of Quran. Purify our actions with the actions under the shade of Quran. Purify our path to be the path of Rasulullah Guide us to the Sirat al-Mustaqim and do not let us deviate from it. Grant us steadfastness on that path until we return to you in the highest state of Iman. Protect us from the mischief of Shaitan and Iblis. Protect us from his deceptions and his cunning. Protect us from the 
torments of the graves, from the fires of the hellfire. And we ask of you the peace and serenity in dunya. We ask of you the peace and coolness in our grave. We ask of you the comforts and safety of Qiyamah. And we ask of you the bliss, eternal bliss of Firdaus. Wa salatu wa salama rasulillah wa akhida wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Akim as rahimakullah. As you come forward, please come forward, start lining up and just listen as you come up. We have a very important event tonight, a very important event where we have a very distinguished scholar from South Africa, Sheikh Bilal Ismail, who will be here tonight. And he made an exception to come tonight, by the way, to come to this masjid to be able to share from his wisdom that Allah has blessed him. So please come for Isha, and inshallah, please attend our dinner afterwards. And inshallah, especially your sisters, if you want to cook something, that would be good. Bring yourselves, bring your spouses, bring your children, bring your friends. And I will see you tonight. Akim salat Rahimakumullah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله سبحانه remember close the gaps no gaps الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال آمين للفقراء المهاجرين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان من قبلهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامرأته حمالة الحطب 
في جيدها حبل من مسد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله ربي والإسلام ديني ومحمدا رسول الله